Hello everyone, peace of Christ to all. Uh, in this video, we will show you one more lie the Muslims try to say when they try to defend their religion. The lady in there, you might not understand what she is saying. Uh, she is, I think she is Indian or something. Uh, she is asking this man, supposedly he's a scholar, I think many of you know him already. Uh, she is asking him why the Quran mentioned that the men, they will have women as whore. Uh, why the women they will not have a, a male uh, for sex <clears throat> if the man he will get his reward 72 whore why the women she will not get equal reward according to the Quran now he is he is answering you want to see the answer you will not believe it and this is will show you that when Muslims they say there is a scholar you know, a scholar is in Islam is someone who say things make Muslims happy, not the one who say the truth. Even even if the Muslims themselves don't agree with him, by the way, which means even of all the Muslims who they are watching, they knew that he is not saying things correctly and he is lying. They will say thank you, thank you, wow, you know, because they are supporting Islam. Because I can, I, you know, I cannot believe that there is maybe ten thousand watching and listening. And there's millions are watching by TV. Ten more than ten thousand, you know, they are there in the present. They are there. None of them he will say to him, "No, you are wrong." There is something wrong in in, in Muslims, honestly, because if somebody, I, if I go to a church and the priest in that church or the minister of that church, he said something wrong, he is teaching wrong. I will say to him, "You do not know the the Bible. This is not what the Bible says." So how tens of thousands are sitting there watching this man as if he is a hero, but none of them he knew that he is talking very wrong. And we will show everyone how Muslims scholar who claim to be scholar, there is one of two. Either you are an idiot, you do not know your religion, which means you are no scholar, you, are, you, 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 know, you claim to be one, maybe to make money, or you are a scholar who knew the truth and you are hiding it which means you are false and you are a liar in both way you are a liar because the first one you are lying at the Muslims and at yourself the second one you are lying at everyone let us listen to the question and to the answer and we will show you how Muslims play their game always a man who has food that is beautiful maidens when he, uh, when he enters paradise what a um, woman get when she enters paradise? This is said for the question <clears throat> that when a man enters paradise, he will get food that is a beautiful maiden. What will the woman get when she enters paradise? <clears throat> the Quran has mentioned the word hur in no less than four different places. <clears throat> it's mentioned in Surah Duhan, chapter number 44, verse number 54. It's mentioned in Surah Tur, chapter number 52, verse number 20. It's mentioned in Surah Rahman, chapter number 55, verse number 72, as well as in Surah Waqiyah, chapter number 46, verse number 22. And many of the translations, especially the Urdu translation have translated the word Hur as beautiful maiden. If the word Hur means a beautiful maiden, it means a beautiful maiden, then what will the woman get in paradise? Actually, the word Hur is a plural for Ahwar, which is applicable to the man, and Hawar, which is applicable to the woman. And it signifies the characteristic of Hawar, which means big, white, beautiful eye, and describes especially the whiteness of the eye. The similar thing is mentioned as Azwaj al Mutaharin, many places in the Quran, in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2. Verse number 25 and so in Nisai chapter number 4, verse number 57, it says Azwajin Mutaharatun, which means companion, pair. So the word Hur is rightly translated 
by Muhammad Asad as spouse and also by Abdullah Isfali. Abdullah Isfali as companion. So Hur actually means a companion or a spouse. It has no gender. For the man, he will get a good lady with big beautiful eyes and for a woman, she will get a good man with big beautiful eyes. I hope that answers the question. <laughs> You know, so the Muslim women look. Listen to this. If we go with this man, his wife in the heaven, she will be screwed by seventy-two men. According to what he, this guy is saying, because the man he will get seventy-two horny women, and now the the women in Islam she will get seventy-two horny men who will screw her. Amazing religion. So your sister, your mother, your wife, she will be screwed by seventy-two men. In heaven, that's what he said. But the fact the Quran doesn't say that, and I will show everyone in a very easy way how Muslims do lie. This is the chapter he mentioned to us, and as you see, the word hur is in English there. They did not they translate, but they, they wrote the word as it is hur. The translation is between the two mark beautiful fair females. Now according to Mr. Zakaria Naik those beautiful fair females this is a wrong translation this is what he said because he said the word hur does not have a gender it's pro it can be for a male it can be for a female now I will show you how the Muslims lie in a very easy way all what we need to do we go down in the line and we read one more verse Allah saying that those hur they never lose their virginity and they never bleed and not only that no man or genie did that to them no man or genie did have sex with them so if they are or they could be male your God Allah saying no men and genie have sex with them yet <laughs> <laughs> now this is the verse he was reading from it says in here Lem, which means none or no one yatmuthahun make them lose their virginity and bleed insun which means a human qablahum before them and not even Jan, wala Jan, which means even, even not even a genie. So no one made them lose their virginity and bleed. Yat muthahunna mean bleed from the ins, which means from the human, and from the genie. If we go to the translation, if we go to a big tail translation. You will see it says clearly in here that those hur, those hur who will be given to the Muslims, whom neither a man or a genie have touched before. What what touch me mean in here? They are not translating a very good translation. The touch in here it's what the Arabic word saying here, yat muthahun, which mean which mean which mean make them bleed. Imagine how 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 awful is the Quran. You know, no one screw them. Let us make it clear. No one screw them and make them lose virginity and bleed. And we will prove that the word yatmuthahun means bleeding from sex. This is their Islamic you know, uh, uh, website, Shakir website. And this is their dictionary. This is coming from eight Islamic dictionaries. This is what the word tamth means. It is bleeding. It can be having their your period if you are a woman or it can be a bleeding from sex so when they say nobody make them in tamath which means nobody made them lose their virginity because you are doing it to them it's not happening natural way like that like the period you are doing that to them which, which means you are causing the women to bleed where that is going to happen or when it's going to happen it is when a lady or a girl she lose her virginity so the God of Islam is promising the Muslims. So the God of Islam, when he said to them, that you know what, those those 
never before been touched by a man or a genie. No man before you touched them, and not even a genie, and none of them made them, you know, lose their virginity and they bleed. This is a very clear evidence that those are women, not men. So if you know Zakaria Naik, tell him that you've been exposed and you are a big fat liar, but nothing is strange. You are just a Muslim. And the Muslim, he have to lie. Because if you don't lie, you are no more Muslim. Jesus is Lord. And according to Zakaria Naik, each Muslim woman, she will be screwed by 72 men in every second.